in this segment, we're here to talk about how, as a community, we are building the future of Cardano together. And, and with me is a very special guest who, as a community member, has creating a lot of utility for Cardano in terms of a variety of applications and also critical infrastructure to enable the growth of the Cardano ecosystem. Merrick, how are you today? Good, very good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining. So for everyone who's watching at home or at a uh, Global Summit meetup, can you please introduce who you are and which projects you're associated with in the, in the ecosystem? Uh, definitely. So my name is Marek Mahout. I'm co-founder of a company named Five Binaries. Uh, we are an infrastructure building company and uh, our flagship project that we are mostly well known for is Blockforce API. However, there is uh, different other applications, just as we are um, building and running the Netlink Oracle systems, and we are also known for being uh, first in many of the many of the challenges, such as like first uh, transaction on the Shelly Shelly network, the first stake pool on ITN, the first block minted on a moving train or an aeroplane, and uh, lately the first smart contract executed on Cardano mainnet. Now, what's your secret here to be the first? You know, we have a team of engineers that are paid at IOHK that are ready to be the first. And yet somehow yourself in the Czech Republic, you become first. How, how is that possible? So first of all, it's really fun doing those challenges. So uh, we are always having fun to actually build in the infrastructure for it. But uh, secondly, I think it really shows that we know our our stuff so we actually we have a pretty deep knowledge of how cardano network and blockchains are working and we are somehow able uh, to actually put the infrastructure together for the for example for the alonzo execution of the smart contract uh, which was a few days ago we used blockforce api to to power the the synchronization of of the transaction across across our nodes so there is a lot of tricks you can use to make it more efficient and that's what we are doing as a company. And as a company, you're also highly supported by the Cardano community. So how, how exactly did you get your, before we go into what is the Blockfrost API, how did Blockfrost come to reality and, and how do you fund yourself as a business? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we are very proud to be community funded. As a matter of fact, we don't have any VC fund behind us or we did not do any token sales on a competitive blockchain platform as other projects, but we've been uh, kind of community funded from the day one. Uh, in the beginning, we funded the company by the rewards from participation in the ITN, uh, incentivized testnet. And right now we are one of the most successful proposal in the project catalyst. So we have more than 25 projects funded right now, and we really appreciate the community support. And uh, we are working hard every day to, to actually, uh, to prove that, that we are worth it. 25 projects from Project Catalyst. So from the on-chain treasury, do you know around how much ADA has actually been um, awarded to you from all of those, those funding challenges? I don't have uh, I don't have the number of top of my head, but I think right now it's about one hundred thousand ADA. Wow, fantastic! Uh, it's great to see that you are growing as the ecosystem grows and, and further applications are are developed. Uh, but let's talk about what's here today and how you are also supporting the growth of other community projects. So, tell us more about Blockfrost and uh, what are like Blockfrost products? Mm -hmm. So uh, Blockfrost.io is an API as a service solution for Cardano. Uh, so firstly, I will probably uh, speak a little bit about what the API is. API uh, stands for Application Programming Interface, and I always compare it to a waiter in a restaurant. So when you as a customer comes to a restaurant, you sit at a table and you put your order to the waiter, which goes to the kitchen to relay that order. The kitchen prepares your food and uh, the waiter brings it back to you, to your table. And in this simple example, uh, the Cardano blockchain is the kitchen. 
the customer is your decentralized application and the waiter is actually blockchain API. So when you are a developer and want to build on Cardano, you don't really need to spend and waste money on building, maintaining the entire infrastructure because not only you need to run the full node connected to all the peers in the infrastructure, you need tools to extract this data from the blockchain and provide a layer to talk to your applications. So if you are a new developer and you are maybe not even sure about your DAP or you want just to play around or you, you want, for example, uh, make sure your application is more uh, fault tolerant, you can use Blockforce API to actually access the Cardano blockchain directly. You don't need to know how to build infrastructure. You don't need to have the skills to submit the first transaction ever on the, on the blockchain. As we do, uh, we take this responsibility and you have the, the time to do actually what you love and that is building the centralized applications. Great. So then when you said uh, accessing information about a blockchain, about Cardano, what types of information and what types of abilities do you allow users that are just plugging in with your APIs? Uh, so you can access all the information that you are seeing on the Cardano blockchain using the Blockforce API. In addition to Cardano, we also support IPFS because uh, IPFS is providing a lot of leverage for uh, NFT creators. And um, right now, with the help of the community funding, of course, we are building a series of SDKs, which is which are tooling that help developers to build on top of Cardano using Blockforce API. Right now, we are supporting more than 10 different languages. So uh, whatever language you are developing on, we got you mostly covered. Right, and I see that, you know, outside of Haskell, this includes JavaScript, Rust, Go, Scala, Java, C++, Python, Ruby, uh, any developer can use us. So how about your then, with your broad ability and to reduce the barrier to access Cardano and build solutions, who is using Blockfrost today? Uh, so right now we have more than 3,000 developers using our platform. Uh, when we look at the usage itself, we are serving average of 500 requests uh, per second, which I think is amazing, given a lot of people call this a ghost chain, which it is certainly not, at least from our perspective. Uh, we are serving 800 terabytes of uh, traffic monthly, which is also huge. I think that's a, that's a really big number. And as I already mentioned, we are covering more than 10 programming languages, and we are really hoping to onboard new programming languages in the future. Wow, 3,000 developers. Uh, that is quite a, a large number. And do you happen to know, like, are these all individual developers or where, where do these developers come from? So I think we have, we have, like from the user perspective, we have everything for really, really sysadmins who are looking to just script some like really simple logic on top of Cardano to large users. For example, a few names I can mention is uh, the Trezor Suite from the Trezor Hardware Wallet is going to use this API, as well as Yoroi from Emrego is using it to scale a little bit better during peaks. Um, of course, there is like the largest NFT marketplace at this time, CNFT.io, who is built entirely on Brockforst. And there is a few other really uh, sound names that I can't really mention right now, but we are working hard with them on some press releases. So I think community will be really pleased with the names that are using Cardano. Great. And you mentioned uh, CNFT Marketplace as a uh, another project in the ecosystem, which I think currently is boasting now over 90,000 NFTs that are being added to their marketplace that are either minted there or, or traded on the marketplace. And that's really helping to flourish uh, the growth of the ecosystem. Do you know how many other projects in the Cardano ecosystem that are, are using your APIs? Uh, so from the, from the numbers we are using and what we consider a project is if there is certain number of calls uh, at least every hour. And from this, we have around 300 active projects on the platform 
which is a huge number because to be honest i don't even can list 300 projects building of cardano so there is a lot of demand for it and there is actually a lot of a lot of institutions that are looking into cardano that are probably going to onboard really soon now that we have smart contracts available I don't imagine that when you first started, you actually were expecting this level of growth. What, what type of growing pains do you experience with, with managing all of this data? Uh, actually, we've been prepared for the scalability issues because we have years and years of experience building APIs. At Trezor, we have built also the API and maintained it for some time. Uh, and uh, that being said, we why we did not use the existing tooling and why we actually built blockfrost in the first place is because of the scaling so blockfrost is really built to scale to millions and millions of calls a second and that is that is why those those actually endpoints are really carefully selected so a lot of time we get feedback from the users like why can you not merge this into one big endpoint and this is actually the response because we really think carefully and we really put a lot of effort into uh, into designing those endpoints so that we can really scale uh, in the future and speaking of the future what how do you think that looks like on cardano now that we have officially launched with smart contracts but we have the continuous ability for native assets so you can create assets without smart contracts uh, where do you see us heading into? So, I I, f I think this is this is one of the really uh, major milestones for Cardano because not only not only we have the smart contract capabilities, but the Cardano itself was built in like with smart contracts in mind. So when we will see the layer two solutions such as Hydra, this is already ready because when Cardano built the design the smart contracts, this was already thought in. And I think this was the last piece that was missing to really have truly decentralized applications. And with the design and the benefits of the UTXC model, which may be a little bit more challenging for developers to learn at first, but it's providing a lot of benefits. From my personal point of view, this is mostly the safety and security of the smart contracts, because I think when you are handling millions of dollars a day, I mean, it should be a little bit hard to design it, so it's a little bit hard to break. As for the Blockfrost itself, like uh, short term, we are looking to add more programming languages, also some of those that are not so popular, because we really believe that no matter what programming language you are using, you should be able to build on Cardano. And uh, in maybe in the next year, one of the like major milestones for us is open sourcing the Blockfrost backend itself. Right now, the specification itself is open source, so you can build your uh, backend application and you're not really vendor locked in. But the, the backend itself is not open source, and this is something we would like to do with the help of the community next year. Great. And on our final few minutes here of our, of our fireside chat, uh, how how, what advice do you give to others, other projects that are looking to get funding from Catalyst and looking to build a solution on, on Cardano? Where do you think are some of the opportunities that you know, Blockfrost isn't already taken care of? So I think there is a lot of opportunities for this. Uh, also, not only for Blockfrost, I mean, we are really looking forward to see a really great uh, competitor ecosystem for Blockfrost to be grown because we really feel competition is healthy. But what I would really like to uh, to maybe uh, recommend for every every catalyst proposal is to build something in front so the community knows your skill and know where the the project is headed itself. And I think we have, like right now, when I was looking at the recent fund proposals and the amount of funding that there is, it's just amazing. There is so much opportunity. So don't be afraid. If you have an idea how to improve the ecosystems, there are resources to do so. So 
just don't be afraid submit your proposal there is a great community of actually reviewers that will help you make your proposal better and i think that's really important and of course if you fail the first time don't worry resubmit your proposal we have a number of proposals that did not pass the first time but we will end with the help and the feedback from the community we actually made the proposal better and it was funded in the latest round great and if there's anyone in the audience that has a, a question for you how, how can they reach you so uh, the best way is to reach me by email at hello at fivebinaries.com that's where our team is actively listening we also have a, a support button on the block for so when you when you are on our page blockfrost.io just hit that uh, button in the right bottom corner and we will get back to you uh, in few in few minutes also that said you can you can find me on twitter uh, and as well as, as blockfrost and our companies five binaries great well you know on behalf of cardano foundation and the entire cardano community uh, i truly want to thank you Blockfrost team and Five Binaries team for really being a shining leader and innovator for the Cardano ecosystem. So thank you thank for your you. time. Thank you so much for having me and enjoy the rest of the summit. You too.